beautiful day here in New York City. Right now I'm at Central Park, right along the Upper East Side. I just had lunch in an iconic New York City restaurant that's purported to have one of the best burgers in the city. I'm talking about JG Mellon. Now I've actually been to JG Mellon before, back in 2019, just a week or two after I moved here, and frankly, I was underwhelmed. I got a bacon cheeseburger, it was good, but no way in hell would I regard it as one of the best in New York City. All right, I got a little distracted there. A dude just walked past with like five of the same breed of dog. I love dogs. Anyways, back on track alongside my burger, I had their cottage fries, and frankly, I thought they were terrible. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I missing here? This place is so well regarded. I mean, it is a Michelin Bip Gourmand. Not the same as Michelin star, but still a fine honor. It has such great reviews. What's the deal? Well, a couple of months later, on Eater.com, their critic Ryan Sutton just proceeded to rip the restaurant to absolute shreds. The review was absolutely savage. Now, it's never a nice thing to see a restaurant just get destroyed like that, but I'm thinking to myself, well, at least I'm not the only one who thinks about JG Mellon in that way. And I'm not even sure if the restaurant has their Bip Gourmand anymore, at least according to the Michelin website. But despite this, the restaurant is still ending up on these lists of the best burger places in the city, and people just still love the establishment. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I should just go again. Give the restaurant another chance, because sometimes you just can't tell with a single visit. So that's what today was all about, and this is my lunch at JG Mellon. JG Mellon opened in 1972 in a building that originally hosted a tavern. The establishment quickly cemented itself as an Upper East Side institution. The name partly comes from the initials of the restaurant's original owners, Jack O'Neill and George Morgs. The melon aspect is a result of an old watercolor painting left behind the bar. Soon people started bringing in other artwork depicting melons, thereby setting the tone for the establishment's decor. It's definitely a small restaurant that makes its age known. There's even a payphone, but I think the interior really lends a certain charm to JG Mellon. Unfortunately, the restaurant doesn't take reservations, which could make acquiring a table a challenge, but I had no problem getting a seat when I arrived right when the establishment opened for lunch on a Wednesday. It's also important to note that JG Mellon doesn't accept credit or debit cards, but fortunately their prices are very reasonable for NYC. Despite this, the eatery isn't completely stuck in another technological age as their menu is accessible via a QR code. It consists of a number of American classics, and while I was there mainly for the burger, I wanted to try some of their other offerings as well, so I started off with a cup of chili. The dish was topped with a generous serving of cheese and onions, and the consistency of the chili was satisfying. I also added the crackers for an extra textural element, and overall it's the kind of chili that if one had a craving for the dish, JG Mellon's example would be more than sufficient. But now it was the moment I was truly waiting for as I was about to feast on the establishment's famous burger. Well, on my first visit, I went with the bacon cheeseburger, but this time I just wanted to try the cheeseburger as I didn't want the bacon to distract from the flavor of the beef. In addition, I left the pickles and onions on the side for that very reason. Despite my underwhelming previous experience at JJ Mellon, I've got to say that the burger has a decent look to it. Circumference-wise, it isn't very big, but it does have an attractive thickness. With my expectations lowered from the last time I had JG Mellon's burger, I was pleasantly surprised upon taking my first bite. It's what I would call a solid, no-frills bar burger. There's a good beefy taste to it, while the seared patty lends the browned meat flavors as a result of the mayo reaction. Both the bun and cheese do their jobs and contribute to an overall satisfying burger. It was nice and juicy and cooked to a perfect medium rare. One will certainly be utilizing a lot of napkins while eating this sandwich. Without a doubt, JG Mellon offers a good burger, but that's the problem. When you start comparing it to the best in New York City, it's simply out of its league. Even though the patty is nice, it lacks seasoning and doesn't have the complex and rich flavors found in the truly great burgers. In his review for Eater, critic Ryan Sutton claimed that the beef tastes like, quote, less like real beef and more like something forged from rehydrated tree bark and marinated asphalt. While I think that is unduly harsh, at the same time the burger is overrated when considering the truly great burgers of NYC. Still, I enjoyed my cheeseburger and for only $13.50 it's certainly worth the price. On the side I enjoyed JG Mellon's classic cottage fries. During my first visit I wasn't a fan of them at all, they were overcooked and simply boring. This time, it was like eating a completely different dish, and they certainly looked different from the fries that I had on my previous visit. They were perfectly fried with a wonderful potato flavor and a good texture. 
even though they were slightly under seasoned, it was an easy fix. Together with my burger, I was indeed enjoying a satisfying lunch, but I still left room for dessert. I got a nice slice of key lime pie and it hit every mark. The level of sweetness and tartness was solid, along with the texturally sufficient base and the pleasant whipped cream. Overall, I've gotta say that my second visit to JG Mellon was much better than my first. However, I made an absolutely foolish blunder as I left. Receipts at the restaurant are handwritten, and I mistakenly based my tip off the wrong number. As a result, it was only hours later that I realized that I under-tipped, so I went back to the restaurant, found my waiter, and gave him $5 more because I believe there's a special space in hell reserved for poor tippers. So that was a pretty satisfying lunch. I'm glad I gave JG Mellon another chance. I can really see what some people really love about it. In a certain sense, comparing my two experiences at the restaurant, it's like comparing night and day. Take for instance the cottage fries. On my first visit, I hated them. This time, I really enjoyed them. It was practically two different types of fries, and the ones I had today were far superior. And the burger I had today was pretty good. It's definitely something that can satisfy a burger craving. I think part of the reason why I enjoyed my burger today more than I did the first time was that my expectations were adjusted. During my first visit to JG Mellon, I was really thinking that I was gonna get one of the best burgers in New York City, and that certainly wasn't the case. Don't get me wrong, JG Mellon certainly serves a good burger, but to put it alongside some of the city's best, like the Mineta Tavern Black Label Burger, or the Emmy Burger from Emily, is simply insane. If one was considering JG Mellon's burgers among the city's best solely in terms of flavor, then it is 100% overrated. But on the other side of the spectrum is the nostalgia of the restaurant, the charm, the great atmosphere. Now that's something that a lot of these other burger places simply can't compete with JG Mellon. But for me, it always comes down to flavor first. JG Mellon does serve a good burger, but it's simply not one of the city's best. At the same time, I would still recommend JG Mellon. It's old school, it's classic New York City. It's an iconic institution for sure. But I would definitely manage your expectations about the burger. It's good, but I just don't believe it belongs on such a high pedestal that so many people have placed it on. But certainly, try it for yourself and come to your own conclusion. In summation, I'm really glad I gave JG Mellon another shot. While it may not be the best burger in New York City, it's still a great restaurant, and I had a great lunch today, and I look forward to trying JG Mellon again.